When you step into the backyard, this is the first view you get, which is this arch trellis that I installed not too long ago. And it's currently bare because the climbing roses are really taking off, but they don't have enough height yet to cover it. And on this side, I have some beans that I recently planted while the core vine really starts to take off. But I really like the fact that this is the first feature that you're gonna see. And once it's covered with blooms and fruit, it's gonna look really pretty. Over on this side, I have my James Galway climbing rose, which as you can see, looks stunning it actually gets a lot more sun than i anticipated when i first purchased it so i bought this climbing rose because i thought it would be perfect for a shady area this portion of the yard faces north so i figured i would get a variety that wouldn't require that much sunlight and as you can see because we just get so much sun here it gets quite a bit of sun but it gets a little bit more protection during the hottest parts of the day but even now where it's 5 p.m it's getting a good amount of sun and i've come out here when it's 11 12 even up to 1 p.m and there's still sunlight over here, which I didn't think would happen because I purchased it during the winter time. And at that point, it was really shady here, so I was kind of worried actually that it wouldn't have enough sunlight. And now I can see that's no problem. And I actually probably could also add other varieties that can tolerate more sun. One that I really, really, really want to get is the Eden Climbing Rose. And before I said I wouldn't get it because it just wouldn't thrive in this location. But what I might wind up doing is moving this James Galway over to that side and then over on this side, planting an Eden climbing rose. The colors on that variety are also nice and pink and soft and it's gorgeous. So I might do that this upcoming winter now that I can see how much sun it'll get throughout the year. So I'm gonna start bringing you over to this side of the garden and show you what we have going on. The sun is very intense right now, but back here I have my Mexico La Grande avocado. And as you guys can see, it looks so much better than it did last month. Last month it had a lot of salt burn. It was very droopy, it was very bald looking. So what I did is I actually cut it back quite a bit because the top looked very bad. And I also wanted this trunk to really build up some strength. And because it was so lanky, I wanted to take off some of that weight that way it can really start to thicken up and then grow taller over time and behind this i have my peace rose so last month it was in a different location i moved it over here because i moved a lot of things around in the garden i tend to do that every few weeks i say i love the location and then i switch things around as the year changes i feel like it's the same as with furniture and doors where sometimes i'm like you know what it needs a new look it needs to go over here so i feel like this rose is doing so much better over here as it fills out, it's gonna add a lot of interest to this little portion. I can't wait to see it filled with blooms. We already have some opening up, others starting to form. And I think it's gonna soften this area because before I felt like it was very sharp over here. It also seems to love this spot because it gets enough sun. It got enough sun in the prior location as well, but here, it's a little bit more dappled sunlight during the hottest parts of the day. And right now you can see it's getting full sun, but it's not as hot as it was earlier this morning. In front of my James Galway rose, I have two containers. They're a lot smaller because that's something that I want to start adding to the garden. Now that I have all of my fruiting plants, now that I have my main staple pieces, I want to add little accents to the whole garden. That way I can add more interest in the form of flowers and other pretty plants. So in the first container, I have a bunch of alyssum and in the second container, I actually have some basil. I need to go through and add basil to the rest of the garden beds because my kids have been asking me for pesto pasta, which is one of their absolute favorite dishes, but I just haven't gotten around to it. I also have all of this set up on drip now. So last month, none of this was set up on drip. I kept holding off because I think I was just being a little bit lazy. It was really hot and I didn't want to be out here sweating, trying to set up drip. But finally I had enough once all of us got sick because I couldn't be out here to water everything by hand. And that's when I realized that I'd rather spend a few days out here sweating like crazy, setting up drip and then not worrying at all for the rest of the year versus being out here every single day hand watering things and then seeing the consequences of me skipping several days of watering. So this was set up not too long ago and whenever I set up drip, I try my best to make sure that it's not too visible. There's no way for me to hide it perfectly because we have turf and we have pavers, but I try to make it as neat as possible. That way you're not distracted by all of the drip tubing. Next to this Fuerte Avocado, I have my Ecuador Palora Dragon Fruit, which I actually need to tie up because as you can see, it's grown quite a bit since the last time I tied it up, which was back here. And it looks so beautiful. It's putting out some roots to grab onto the wood. It looks amazing. This is a cutting that I bought from Etsy. It was rooted when I got it. It was very small. It was actually this big. And then all of this is new growth, which makes me super happy because prior to tasting this variety, I didn't really know what I thought about dragon fruit. I had bought the red kind at the store and it tasted like water to me. And then one time I tried the yellow one and oh my goodness, it was 
so delicious. I immediately had to buy a plant and they were very expensive locally. So I purchased the cutting off of Etsy for under $30 and look at it now, it's really beautiful and I can't wait to harvest fruit from it someday. And this is also set up on drip. And then next to it, I have this majestic beauty right here. So this is a dragon fruit plant that I bought from Home Depot and I planted it in November of 2021. When I bought it, it probably reached up to about right here and then it started pushing out some growth. And then at one point I tried bending it over the piece of wood and I snapped it. And then all of these other branches started coming out and it looks really cool right now. I do still want to add a top to these. I haven't yet just because it's been so hot and I haven't been out here, but I love the way it looks. Every time I come out here, I have to remember though not to walk into it because I almost do every single time. But I really love how it looks. It's very happy here. One thing you guys might notice right now is that there's no shade cloth over any of these tropicals. And once summer comes around, that story might change and I might wind up adding some protection. But for right now, I'm trying to let them be just so that they can get a little bit more acclimated. But I love seeing how this dragon fruit is performing because even though it's getting a ton of sun, I don't see any type of sunburn on it. And the next to it, I have my pineapple guava or fijoa. Fijoa. I'm going to continue to call it pineapple guava. I know that it has a proper name, but I already forgot what it's called again. I don't know why my brain can't remember the correct name every single time, but this is actually the tree that made me realize how badly I needed to add drip to this section because I went through, I hand pollinated a ton of blooms and I saw a lot of them starting to swell. But around that time, I was going out of town very often. Then my family started getting sick, so I wasn't out here watering it like I should have. And the tree started getting very droopy and pretty much every single bloom dried up and fell off. And I feel like that was my fault because it was one of the most important times in this little tree's life because I feel like the fruiting period is a very important time for any tree. And the last thing you wanna do is put it under more stress by not giving it any water because then at that point, it has to decide whether to keep that fruit or to try and stay alive and put all its resources towards living. So I feel like it chose to live and it dropped all its fruit and that's when I realized I had to install drip that way that doesn't happen again because I was really hoping for some fruit and I don't know if it'll flower again later on in the year but as of right now there's no fruit on it. The good thing is though after installing drip not only does it have brand new growth down there as you can see which by the way I'm going to take off because I want to continue to train it into more of a tree form but it has new growth everywhere and the leaves aren't doing what they were doing before even though it's getting full sun which was instead of facing out they were caved in sort of trying to protect itself which is really interesting to see and that mainly happened during the times when it wasn't getting enough water here where you see this little trowel i used to have a red hog plum it didn't make it it started drying up and i noticed it like a month ago i would say and even in the last garden tour i told you guys it wasn't looking that great but i was still holding out hope and then one day I came out here, I was staring at it and I was like, this tree does not look like it's gonna make it. I did the scratch test, brown, no green anywhere. And then I started digging in and trying to find roots, no roots anywhere. The whole tree was just a goner. And I felt really bad because I want a red hog plum so badly. So I ordered a cutting off of Etsy and they sent me a branch about this big, probably bigger than this. I cut it up, rooted it, and it's actually pushing out some new growth, which you'll see right now. So this container will house one of those cuttings once they actually become more established and start rooting and leafing out, but they're looking very promising right now. Over on this side of the trellis, I have some Taiwan yard long beans, I believe. Maybe they might be some Chinese red noodle bean. I want these beans to take over this trellis while my coralline fills in because it's really taking off but it's taking some time which is to be expected because I started it from seed and the good thing is that my baby hasn't pulled out the new ones that are growing and they look really pretty. Next to that mirroring the other side I have a container of basil, a container of alyssum and then here in the front I have some grape cuttings, some fig cuttings, some of which have fruit on them and they could look a lot better, but while we were sick, I wasn't able to keep up with the watering as much as I should have. Over here, I have a soursop seedling, a manila mango seedling, along with some papayas that are growing in that container as well, and then two red hawk plum cuttings that I am propagating. In the front here, we have my Puerto Avocado, which was a lot taller than it is right now. I went through and cut it back because even though it had put on a ton of beautiful new growth, it was still very flimsy and it didn't have a lot of strength to the trunk. And even though I was pulling it in several different directions to try and get it to straighten out, because it was just so weak, 
every time there was a slight wind, it would just flop over. So I went ahead and cut it back to where the trunk started getting a little bit thicker. That way it continues to get stronger over time and it'll still put on height. It'll just take a little bit longer. But in the meantime, I wanted to focus on really strengthening that trunk. That way it doesn't continuously flop over. Next to that, I have my African Pride at the Moya, which is still flowering. I feel like this tree has been flowering for weeks now and it doesn't slow down. The thing with this variety here in Arizona is if you for sure want fruit, you need to go through and hand pollinate, which is something that I'm not doing because it's a new planting. I didn't expect it to fruit for at least a few more years. So it was very exciting and shocking for me to see it start to fruit or try to fruit a few months after being planted, but it's still just the baby. So I wanted to focus on putting on some more height, putting on some new growth, establishing good roots before it tries fruiting. But even now looking at all the leaves that it has, it looks so much more full than it did last month. And then next to that, I have my fruit punch mango. And this tree has put on so much growth in the last few weeks, it's insane. I planted this tree last year and because it was so hot, I added some shade cloth. I had this whole structure set up around it and it was really tedious because anytime there was a slight wind and that shade cloth moved a little bit, any new growth would immediately fry in the sun because it was in a different part of the yard. And then finally I had enough and I moved it over to this portion of the yard. I feel like the tree immediately had so much more relief because now it's in a nice little microclimate where it gets protection during the hottest parts of the day. And as you can see right now, it's getting full sun, but the sun at this point of the day isn't as intense as it was earlier. So even though there is a tiny little bit of sunburn here and there, mostly on the new growth, it's doing a lot better than it did last year. And about 99% of the growth has absolutely zero sunburn, which is awesome. And I'm doing nothing. So this just goes to prove you guys that you don't always need huge shade trees to create microclimates in your yard. I don't have any huge trees in ground. All of my trees are in containers and all of them were planted in the last year to year and a half. So they're not huge trees. What's providing a nice little microclimate for all these tropicals is that they're up against the house. So they're not getting a crazy amount of Southern sun exposure. And then over on this side, I have my gold nugget loquat, which is also pushing out some beautiful new growth. It's put on quite a bit of height. It really loves this spot and it still gets a good amount of sun. It has no shade cloth anywhere, but it's in a nice little microclimate. And I personally really love the shape of the leaves on this tree. I do see a little bit of salt burn though. So I feel like I need to up the watering on this guy just to make sure that it doesn't continue to spread. All of the new growth doesn't have any salt burn, but some of the older growth does. And I didn't notice that last month, so I need to stay on top of that. That's one thing that I come out here and do constantly is check the leaves of my trees to make sure that they're not getting too little water, too much water. And if I start to see signs like these, I know that this tree needs a lot more water than it's getting right now. Next up is my bear's lime tree. Oh, this tree is filling in so nicely. And it took a few months for it to really start getting into that stride of pushing out new growth. For a while there, it just looked bald. Month after month, just bald tree. But it did have to recover from the disturbance of its roots, me having to cut some of them off because they were girdling due to the way it was planted when I first started gardening. And now it looks so much better. It has new branches everywhere. It's got some fruit on it. I feel like if it had been planted correctly from the beginning, we would have a ton more fruit than we do right now, but we're still gonna get several limes from this tree, which is the important part. And then next year, I know we're gonna get an even better harvest. And then next to that, I have my iceberg rose. I actually went through and pruned this back not too long ago. I don't really worry as much whenever I see the roses look like this we're also approaching some of the hottest months of the year here in Arizona so they're gonna look like this until it starts cooling down and then all of a sudden the foliage turns this really nice vibrant green and there's no burn anywhere but as of right now even though there's a little bit of sunburn here and there it still looks really beautiful and then next way to have this star jasmine it hasn't flowered again I do see some buds starting to pop out, so it will soon, but it has started putting on quite a bit of growth. The tallest vine is about right here. So soon it's gonna be a lot taller than me. Over on this side, we have something similar happening. Here we have another star jasmine. This one was actually planted before the other one, but it's not as tall. It is a little bit more wide though, a little bit more full, which is really interesting that that one grew a lot taller. This one has stayed a little bit shorter, but I think it'll catch up. And that one also gets a little bit less sun. This one gets full sun all day long. In the front, I have another iceberg rose. And then over here, I have my little clementine tree. It's so interesting to see how the trees sort of flip flop. 
So in the past few months, this one looked a lot better than my bear's lime tree because it was a lot more full and it was also repotted because I didn't plant it correctly when I first started gardening. But now compared to my bear's lime tree, I feel like it's not as full. My bear's lime tree is super tall now. This one is still putting on some height, but at a slower pace. At the same time, I do see a lot of growth starting to pop through. So that's a really good sign. And I also have to keep in mind that they're two different varieties of citrus, so they're gonna have different growing habits. But it's just really interesting to see how one tree can look so far behind and then from one month to the other, everything just completely changes on you. Now, this is something I'm super excited to show you. Right here is my yellow hawk plum. This is a grafted variety. It took a while for it to really start taking off. The thing about this variety is that it does really well in the heat. It can take full sun. It loves the sun. I don't have to add any sort of protection to it. I just need to make sure that it's nicely fed and watered. And as you can see here, it's pushing out some beautiful new growth. Literally from one day to the next, leaves after waiting month after month just checking for any little swelling buds i honestly didn't see any but from one day to the next leaves everywhere i shouldn't say everywhere it still looks pretty bald but there's leaves over here there's new growth starting to come up right here here and in the back as well so i feel like next month it's going to look totally different from this month and then behind it i have my tropic pink guava it hasn't fruited yet for a while there i felt like it was going to fruit i started seeing some buds forming but maybe I was wrong and they just turned into leaves because I don't see any flowers anywhere. But the tree itself is looking really beautiful. It still keeps on pushing new growth. It's putting on some more height and the trunk is really starting to become nice and thick. Next to it, I have my Roseboro blackberries, which last month were tall with a single stake just going straight up. And then I didn't really like the look of it. So I switched it out with a teepee trellis made out of bamboo stakes that I bought from the greenhouse mega store. And I love the way it looks now. I feel like it has a lot more stability and I'm able to tie the canes back a lot easier. This variety does really well here in Arizona and we've gotten quite a few berries from it. Before planting my own blackberries, I did not like blackberries at all. They weren't sweet enough for me. I just felt like they were very acidic and sour. And now that I grow them myself, I feel like I can pick them at the perfect time and they are so sweet and flavorful, but they still have that nice punch of acidity that just balances out perfectly. So I definitely do want to add some more varieties to the garden, but I want to add some thornless varieties because it's really hard to tie this back sometimes and I have to make sure to wear gloves. Otherwise, I wind up being poked every single time. As you guys can see, things are a little bit different now. We have some more trellises that I've set up. I haven't finished attaching them. I want to attach them right here. They're mirroring some of the trellises that I have in the garden. The reason I added these is not only because I want to be able to grow melons vertically, but also because I wanted to distract from the grow bags that have the plastic trash bags over them. The reason they have the plastic trash bags is because they just dry out so fast here in Arizona. I have them set up on drip now, so that's helping a lot. But because we have really dry winds coming through every single day and then the temps are well over 100, they're like 104, 105, they're not my favorite thing to grow in, but I feel like the plastic bags really help with that. But then what bugs me is seeing the plastic bags over them. So I wanted to add these trellises to add a little bit more interest, draw the eye away from the bags and more towards the trellises. And then as the vines fill them out, it'll be really nice to see some mini melons hanging from here. So I really love the way this looks and you can barely even notice the back now, or at least I can't, <laughs> which is good because it really bugged me before. Right here, I have my Santa Rosa plum, which I've actually pruned back a few days ago. It was just sending out so much crazy growth. This was one of the last trees to wake up and now it's one of the trees that's the farthest along just because it's very vigorous. So I wanna continuously prune it every few months not just do it twice a year because they're in containers so i really want to maintain a nice little shape that way come winter time i don't have to do a lot of heavy pruning to it but this tree has these branches right here this branch in the back is one that i grafted onto it so this is a different variety this is a bourbon plum and i eventually want to graft another bourbon plum branch over on this side i had tried doing some chip budding not too long ago it was unsuccessful <laughs> i think i like doing things like cleft grafting a lot better or other techniques aside from chip budding. I think I need a little bit more experience to be able to do that one successfully. Behind that, I actually have some potatoes, which should be ready to harvest soon. I need to add drip to that. I feel like when it comes to potatoes, I tend to 
try and hand water them. I don't even know why. I should just set up drip that way I don't have to worry about anything. But I always tell myself, oh no, because I, I'll probably move that grow bag away and I don't want to have to add something else back there. And then days like today when it's really hot, I regret it. So I'll probably set up drip back there as well. That way they can really take off and then grow to their full potential because when you don't water them enough, oftentimes they'll start shriveling up and then the potatoes that you harvest are really tiny. And then here's some of the other trees. So this is my Florida Prince peach and it has one single peach on it. Oh, here it is. It's really hard to see, it blends into the foliage. I wanna go in and bag it because I would be very sad if the only peach that we got this year gets eaten by birds. But the tree itself is beautiful. This is one of my favorite shapes. It's also open center and I just love the way it looks. It's really nice and full. And I thought we were gonna get a lot more production this year, but I feel like next year will be the year. This is a variety that does really well here in Arizona. It has low chill hours, which is something to keep in mind depending on where you live. Here, it doesn't get very cold at all. It feels like we don't really ever get a winter. So you wanna make sure to keep those chill hours really low. This is a perfect variety for that. It's vigorous, it's highly productive, and it's a self-pollinating variety. But I always like to add two just so I can get an even better harvest because these trees are not gonna get very big because I'm growing them in containers. So I'd rather have two varieties to cross-pollinate, get as much production as possible from a smaller tree but it looks so pretty. And I love the way the vines look just sort of wrapping themselves around the trees, not around the trees, but like draping across the pots. I wanna use them as a sort of living mulch for these trees and also add a lot more interest. Back there, I have some sweet potato vines, which I also need to set up on drip. And I even have one small melon down there starting to form. The same thing is happening over here where I have these watermelon vines spilling over and the shape of these trellises along with those watermelon vines reminds me of Cinderella's chariot. Does it not? Every time I look at them where I stare out the window, that's the first thing that comes to mind is Cinderella's chariot. And I just think it's so endearing. So one thing that I wanted to point out is that the price of everything in regards to gardening has gone up. I used to pay around $2.18 for the wider remesh panels. These are really narrow and these I think were more expensive. I think they were around $3 each. And these would be too narrow to use for my other planters. I would need to combine a couple of them to make it wide enough, but I think for these grow bags, they work perfectly. And I might eventually switch out the grow bags for more 25 gallon containers and I will still use these trellises for that because I just love the way they look. Next is my Pakistan mulberry. I also went through and pruned it back not too long ago because again this is a variety that grows very well here in Arizona, a little too well for containers. So I want to make sure to keep its size in check. That way it doesn't grow out of control and then quickly outgrows the container that it's in, which is a 25 gallon. Next to my Pakistan mulberry, we have some more sweet potatoes and melons over in this grow bag. And I actually don't remember planting sweet potatoes there, but I see the leaves. So I must've just missed one or something. I don't know, but it looks really pretty either way. The good thing about the leaves is that they're edible. So I can use them as greens throughout the summer until fall and winter comes along when I can plant spinach again and then other healthy greens. The next tree is this Anna apple. This is my daughter's apple tree. I'm not in love with the shape that it has right now. I liked it a lot better before I did some pruning and I immediately regretted it, but it's getting there. I see some new buds coming through so that more branches can start forming. So I wanted to have at least four main branches. And at first I was growing it with an open goblet shape, but now I want to do it as a modified central leader. I might change my mind again when winter comes around but I think maybe a modified central leader would be better. Next to it, I have another Rosboro blackberry, some more potatoes, which look really sad because again, I have not been keeping up with watering. And then next to that, I have my Burbank plum. I say this every single time, but this tree means a lot to me because my sister gave it to me for Christmas and it's very near and dear to my heart, which is why I wanted to graft that variety onto my Santa Rosa plum. And I also think it has some of the prettiest foliage. One thing I'd like to know about this variety is that it needs a pollinator to be able to produce fruit. Something else to keep in mind is that it requires quite a bit more chill hours than something like the Santa Rosa plum. But thankfully I live at a higher altitude, so we get a little bit more chill hours here where I am. And this tree has been performing pretty well. It actually flowered quite a bit. It would put on a beautiful show but the reason that they didn't get pollinated was because my Santa Rosa didn't wake up in time. Next to that, I have my tomatillos, which look very sad. I'm actually gonna cut them back about 24 inches and then try to keep them alive until fall to see if I can get some production then because something has been eating everything. And I don't think it's hornworms. I think it's something else because the leaves are just bitten through like crazy. And every time I come out here to check, I don't see anything on them. 
and I don't know what's going after these tomatillos, but they haven't been as productive as I wish they would have been. I did get to harvest some tomatillos from it, but barely anything. There's two plants here. I know that you need at least two tomatillo plants to cross pollinate with each other, so I planted them together. I have a purple and a green, so I'm hoping in the fall that'll be a completely different story, but as of right now, it's full, just not thriving. In between the larger containers, I have a bunch of three gallon containers because I'm doing this challenge where I'm trying to grow fruits in three gallons for people who have a smaller backyard or maybe a balcony, or maybe they just don't have a lot of room to grow with or they can't build raised garden beds. I wanted to show them what you can grow in three gallons. So here we have an artichoke plant, which I need to cut back because it's just way too hot for it. And then come fall, it should just bounce back and then we should start to see some production then. In this container, I have some Thai peppers that I started from seed that I took from peppers I bought at the international supermarket because my husband loves Thai peppers and the drive there is really far. So we go maybe every few months and we try and stock up on them. And I figured I'd try and grow some for him myself. That way he can come and harvest them fresh from the plant. And the plant looks really happy overall. Keep in mind that all of this is set up on drip, so I don't have to worry about watering anything. Next to that, I have my desert gold peach, which I'm trying to exfoliate, which is why I cut it back so much. If you guys look back to last month, it was a lot taller than this, but then I really started going through trying to do more research about how to train it to the fan shape that I want. And I'll continue to shape it as time goes by. I also set up this trellis for it, which is not my favorite looking trellis, but I think it'll do the job. This was a new planting this year though, which is why there's not a whole lot to look at, but I'm really trying to stick to my plan of growing it as an espalier tree. And the main reason for that is because I wanna keep these pathways open. And if I were to let it grow like a regular tree, it's gonna take a lot more space. So I want it to stay flat against the wall. Next to that, I have a Kamo eggplant, which I've already been harvesting from. And then next to that, I have some shishito peppers, which I actually haven't tried yet, but that plant is very productive. I have another one in a garden bed and that one is doing okay, but the ones that are in containers seem to be doing incredibly well. Here I have another Roseboro Blackberry, also doing amazing. I don't see any fruit right now because my kids are out here all the time picking them. Next that I have another eggplant. I would tell you guys the varieties, but honestly, the tags are probably wrong. Every time I go into harvest things, I try and look for the tags and they always say something different. And I know that my kids switch them around on me, so now I don't even bother to try and look for the tags. Here I have a Dorset golden apple tree. This is a replacement for the tree that I lost last year. That was actually the only tree that I didn't start from a cutting that I lost and it hurts so bad to see that tree dry up. And I know that the reason it didn't make it is because back then I didn't have a proper irrigation system set up. I had fan emitters, which work amazing, except I had so many containers that there wasn't enough pressure for them to go off properly. And I was only watering them for about three to four minutes a day. I don't know what I was thinking, you guys. It's like I forgot I live in Arizona and I was only watering my trees for three to four minutes and every single tree had so much burn on the leaves. They were very crumbly and shriveled up and I didn't know what was going on. And then finally I figured out it's because they were just thirsty. They were getting hit by the full sun all day, every day and getting a few drops of water. <laughs> so this little tree has replaced that one and it looks so beautiful. It's really starting to take off. This one is also going to be a spoliate. Next to that, I have this pepper plant. I don't know what variety it is. I've been told several different things. All I know is that it's very spicy, but very good. I've started using these a lot more in my cooking and I really like them. I just can't eat them raw like I did that one time, <laughs> which I still think about sometimes because it was very painful. Over here, I have some more eggplant, which has some fruit on it, as you can see. This container with this trellis has nothing in it. I had actually gone through and seeded a ton of peas in here, but I did it really late in the season. So by the time they actually started taking off, it got too hot, it got powdery mildew everywhere, and I just had to take them out. And I haven't planted anything else since, but I'm going to plant something in here soon. I just have to figure out what, maybe some mini melons. That would be really cute to see them dangling down. Or maybe some Malabar spinach would be nice in here. Next to that, I have these Sungul tomatoes, which are perfectly ripe right now. And I haven't been through to harvest them because I just munch on them whenever I'm out here in the garden. And this plant took a while to really take off. For the longest time, I felt like it was really thin and spindly and it stayed about this height. And then out of nowhere, it started just shooting out vines and it looks so much prettier now. 
It's not as productive as other varieties like my Tommy Toe tomatoes. That variety is really good, but I just love the flavor of this one. Next up is my variegated pink lemon tree. Sometimes I feel like trees can be very stubborn. As a gardener, I try not to let them fruit the first year. Sometimes I make an exception for a tree if I've just let it go on too long or if I'm really tempted to try the fruit, but I try to avoid that because I feel like it's very important for them to set good roots down their first year. That way the following years they can handle our summers with no problem because they've got a nice root system. They've got a nice amount of growth. They're able to actually handle it because they didn't focus their first year on fruiting. But this tree, this tree is so stubborn. I've come through, <laughs> what was that? Oh no, there was nothing, I think it was my hair. That freaked me out. Every few weeks I come in, I take off the blooms, I take off any fruit that's developing, and it keeps trying to fruit. There's some blooms starting to form right here, there's some more starting to form right there, but all I wanted to do is just focus on growth because look at this trunk right here, it's so thin. It's actually thicker than it was when I first planted it, but still a little too thin for my liking. I want it to get nice and strong so that then it can start trying to fruit. Next to that is my son's dwarf Cavendish banana and it looks so pretty. This is one of the new leaves that I recently put out. There's another one popping through. There's a little bit of sunburn along the edges of the leaves, which is to be expected because again, it's new growth and that new growth is so fragile and the sun is so intense that immediately it starts burning the edges, but the rest of the leaves look really great. And if we look down here, it actually has a pup that's starting to fill out nicely. This variety is perfect for containers and it's very special to me because my son is the one who picked it out. It's been through a lot because shortly after being planted, our winter came along and during one of our winter storms, it was knocked over. A lot of the roots were torn off and I just felt so bad. I came out here probably past midnight. There was cold rain. I thought I was gonna get sick, but I couldn't sleep because I kept worrying about his little banana plant. I saw it just tipped over, so I ran out, tried to put it back in the pot as much as possible, and then eventually dragged it indoors and kept it inside for the next few weeks until it started recovering, and then it brought it back outdoors. And now look at it. Next up is my ruby red grapefruit, which has some fruit down here. Let me see if I can find one. Oh, right here and it's getting pretty big. So this was a tree that I thought would not fruit until a few more years. And the reason for that is because after being planted, it took a while for it to really start taking off. The leaves were constantly turning yellow. It didn't look happy. It would drop leaves here and there. And I wound up repotting it, adding more soil, lifting it up, making sure that the soil was nice and well draining. And now look at it. There's a little bit of sunburn going on. Some of the leaves you can see a little bit of discoloration, but there's no chlorosis anywhere. It's got fruit on it. It's putting on some nice new growth. And overall, it looks amazing. I'm very happy with this variety. I have childhood memories of me and my siblings sitting on the sidewalk, eating grapefruit with salt. And during the hottest parts of the summer, it was one of my favorite treats. So I can't wait to try some with my kids. I think they're gonna love it and I'm just anticipating the moment when we can harvest the fruit. By the way, if you're wondering what this is for, it's bird netting, but I have it down there because I'm still dealing with my little rodent problem. I haven't seen any in a few weeks, but I do see little burrows here and there. So I keep trying to cover any holes that I see just so that they don't keep coming back. And I guess the good thing is I haven't seen any in a while, but I feel like they're still here. They just know that I'm aware of them and they're aware of me, so we're just not crossing paths, but I don't want them in the garden. Next to that is this improved Meyer lemon tree. It has quite a bit of fruit on it. If you guys look at the height of this tree, it's not very tall at all, and it still has about a dozen fruit on it, which is amazing. Next year, it'll be a lot taller than this, so we'll get a lot more production from it as well because it'll be more mature and established. And then next to that, I have some loofah that's growing. This is my first year growing loofah, and I had actually forgotten I had seeds. I bought them on Etsy last year, because I saw videos on TikTok of people peeling the sponges and showing how you can use them to wash dishes and use them in the bath. So I'm very excited for that. I also love the way they're starting to climb this trellis with all their little tendrils, which is gonna add a lot more interest to this portion of the yard. And it'll also add a little bit of shade for my kids to play underneath. Next to that, I have my Cara Cara orange, which I don't think it has fruit on it. I thought I had seen some back when it was flowering, but I don't know now. I don't think it kept any of it. Either way, it's been pushing out some beautiful new growth. There are a few leaves over here that are getting a little bit of sunburn just because this section gets full sun throughout the hottest parts of the day. 
but the tree itself is looking amazing regardless. It's really putting on some new growth and I feel like by next year, we're gonna have a gorgeous little citrus hedge over here, just full of different types of fruit. I think that's gonna look incredible. Next to that, I have my blood orange. This is a Moto Blood Orange variety and it also looks very beautiful. You can see the new leaves based on the color, they're a little bit lighter and it's put on quite a bit of height. It's almost at the top of the fence. This variety did not flower this year, but hopefully next year it does. I love the way it looks and the way it smells. Every time I walk through here, even just the leaves on the trees have this citrus scent. And when they're blooming, it reminds me of Disney, that ride where, I don't remember the name of the ride, but the one where you're soaring. Is it soaring California? Soaring through California? And then at one point you get that orange scent. That's what it feels like to me, especially when it's really nice and windy. So I love that. Please excuse the mess, but back here I have this Valencia orange. This variety is really good for fresh eating, but also for juicing, which is why I bought it. And it's doing really great. This one did flower, but it was one of the smaller trees that I bought. It came in a starter tree pot, so I didn't expect it to fruit this year. I was really surprised when I started seeing it flower, but shortly after it dropped all the little fruit that was starting to swell, which is understandable because I've heard that citrus will hold on to the fruit that it can support and drop everything it can't. So hopefully next year, it'll be a little bit more mature and it'll be able to hold on to some of that fruit. And then in front of that, I have another container with some marigold and a pepper plant. And this pepper plant is getting quite huge. I also want to add in some climbing vines that way they can take over this portion of the arch because on the other side I have some melons that I also want to take over. The only thing is that right now they seem to be climbing the marigolds and the dried up dill more than the actual trellis. And then next to that I have my Mexican cream guava. This tree is very near and dear to my heart because this is a variety that I had been searching for shortly after I started gardening and I would say it took me about a year to find it and it's still settling in. This tree is so beautiful that it attracts everything. Something started coming after the leaves. Also, the rodents were trying to get into the container because it was constantly being dug up and it was so frustrating for me. It's finally being left alone, so I'm starting to see some new growth coming through, but I think it's gonna take a few more months for it to really start to fill out. I just keep coming in here to make sure that there's no suckers coming out from the rootstock because this is a grafted variety. Back here are my banana plants and they are enormous. I feel like the Goldfinger banana is really catching up to this Manzano banana and looking so lush and fabulous. For the longest time, the Goldfinger was just staying at the same height. The leaves are getting really large. As you can see here, they're a lot wider than the one, are they? Well, they used to be, but they used to be a lot wider than the ones on my Manzano banana. But it also took a long time for that plant to establish because when I planted it, I did not shade cloth and it wasn't set up on drip right away. So it took a while for it to really recover because it was transplanted, I would say maybe two or three times. So it went through a lot. And then once it was happy again, it really started growing into its own. And now look at it. It doesn't have fruit on it yet, but it does have pups. And hopefully this year we get some fruit. The Manzano banana, on the other hand, does have fruit back there, which isn't ripe yet, I don't think. I'm not sure how long bananas take to ripen the fruit, but it feels like forever. In this first container, I have a fig cutting, which doesn't look very promising right now. So not so long ago, I went through and I propagated some rare fig cuttings of the Italian 258 and the Black Madera and none of them really took off. One of the main reasons was that my baby just yanked them out the same days that I transplanted them, so I, they had to recover from that. And then afterwards, it just got so hot that I feel like they started just declining a little bit. I haven't seen any new growth coming out, but maybe I just need to wait a little bit longer. Either way, if it doesn't work next winter, I'm gonna order some more cuttings and I'm gonna try and graft them onto other varieties. Next to that, I have some melons growing over here. I'm trying to get them to climb over the trellis because I want melons dangling down. I think that'll look really pretty. I did it last year in other portions of the garden and it looked very whimsical. And that's always the vibe that I'm going for. And over here, I have my lemon guava, which is kind of leaning over to one side, I feel. I probably need to stake it and pull it over here so it starts growing a little bit straighter. But this tree is just full of fruit. This is another one of those trees where I just cut it, stop it from flowering. Every time I try it, it would just start pushing out more and more flowers. So finally, I just let it do its own thing. Some of it should be ready to harvest in the next few months and then others are barely developing. It's also pushing out quite a bit of growth. And this is my funkiest tree. And I say that because the trunk literally curves like an upside down L and I could just chop it off right here and then have it start branching out so it grows a lot more straight, but 
I think it's got character. That took forever, but now that we're done, let's come into the garden. Before I show you guys the garden beds, I wanted to show you these trellises right here so you guys can see what they look like this month because in the next few months, they should start filling out. I planted a bunch of Armenian cucumber seeds, different types of beans, melons, so those should start taking over. And last year, I remember having melons just dangling down everywhere. I made these really cute little macrame hangers to support them and it just looks so beautiful. Sometimes I go back and I look at those videos and it makes me feel so nostalgic because I wanna see that happening again. So I wanna get a good shot of what it looks like right now because they're nice and bare. And in a few months, they should be just covered with leaves everywhere and fruit. For now though, let's focus on this bed. So I have one, maybe two corn growing in this garden bed. I had sown a lot more, but recently the birds have discovered my garden and they eat just about everything. I think that along with the rodents were just eating at the seeds, so nothing was really germinating. And for the longest time, I didn't know why until I started seeing things being dug up. You guys might notice I have three tomato plants back here, and some of these tomatoes are getting pretty large. I had some even bigger ones, but that was before I set up my drip irrigation. When I didn't have my drip irrigation, I started dealing with a lot of blossom end rot because we were going through really wet and dry periods. There's already birds starting to come into the garden. I was dealing with some really wet and dry periods because I was traveling, because my family got sick and then I got sick. So I was rarely ever out here. I just didn't feel well enough to come out and water for long periods of time. And I started seeing my plants suffer. Some of my tomato plants didn't even make it because of that. Now that I have drip, I feel like everything's just gonna look so much better because now it's getting watered on a regular basis. And then in the front, I have an eggplant that I cut back significantly because it's just getting so hot. I noticed with some varieties of eggplant, when it gets way too hot, they don't really ripen properly. They don't grow as big. They develop really small fruits and they quickly turn brown and hard. So I'd rather just cut it back, let it start leafing out again, and then in the fall, start harvesting from it regularly. Something else you might notice is that there's cardboard everywhere. And the reason for that is because I went through and sowed some seeds with my kids. So the way I do that is I don't remove the mulch. I don't do anything like that. I just add compost on top, place my seeds, cover them up. And then once they pop through, I'm gonna add some more straw mulch around them. That way I can just continue to build in layers and I'm not disturbing the soil underneath. This next garden bed has some more sunflowers, which I need to stake up because they're starting to fall over and I also need to go through and deadhead them. I already went in and reseeded some more, but I planted more mammoth sunflowers. The varieties that you guys see right now, I don't know what variety they are. They might be the Henry Wild or something else, but these I saved from last year and then just sprinkled them throughout the garden. And then I also had a bunch of them that just reseeded themselves just randomly. The only thing is I didn't get any mammoth sunflowers popping up. So I went through and purposely seeded a bunch of them so I can grill them and those should be popping up soon and ready to harvest in a few months. If you guys have never eaten a sunflower, I would highly recommend it. I know it sounds weird. I thought it was weird too until I tried it and oh my gosh, it's so amazing. Here in the front, I have some one So I found the seeds on Strictly Medicinal after seeing them in a book. It was years since I had even seen that plant. I saw it in a book that I checked out from the library and it just brought back so many memories. And I read that it was really heat tolerant. So I immediately went online, found some seeds and this plant is huge. And it's starting to try and flower, which is what I want because that's the portion that I'm going to use to make the dish of my mom's. Also, I've got to say that I did not plant this. This reseeded itself from last year. The rest of this bed is actually pretty empty. We've got cardboard everywhere because I just went through and reseeded but we do have this gorgeous Tommy Toe tomato back here, which has been very productive. It was a volunteer, and I think it's one of my top varieties just because of how productive it is, and because when the tomatoes actually ripen, they taste amazing. At one point, I said they were as good as a sun gold. I take that back. I think the sun gold is still my number one, but these are a really good second. You guys might hear my irrigation going off right now, but I wanted to show you what the trellis looks like right now because when you have vines growing over a portion of it, when you stand back, it creates this illusion. You guys can see some of the remesh panel over on this side, but once it's covered with foliage, it almost gives this illusion that the vines are just suspended in the air. And I remember whenever I would make harvest videos on TikTok, people would ask me, how did you grow it like that? How is it standing up like that? Because you couldn't tell 
where the trellis was because the galvanized wire is just so thin that it creates a really beautiful illusion and it's strong enough to hold up these tomatoes and I didn't realize that or even thought about trellising tomatoes this way until this Tommy Toe tomato just would not stay contained in the teepee trellis that I made. The only thing about trellising tomatoes this way is I have to constantly tie them up because they just grow wild and all over the place. So if I wanna give them a nice shape, I have to constantly trim them back, tie them up, and then get rid of anything that's just dangling down in a weird shape or not producing anything. I'm gonna try to go quickly over on this side, but this bed has this huge pepper plant right here which I recently harvested from. That's the video that went live not too long ago and there's a bunch of red peppers all along the bottom portion of the plant. So I'm gonna start dehydrating some. What I've been doing with my pepper harvest is just giving them away. That's honestly all I can do at this point because I can't cook with all of them. There's just way too many and the plants are so productive. The other day I told my husband, I'm not starting any more pepper seeds for the fall. I can't because I don't have anywhere to put them. And even if I did have somewhere to put them, I have so many pepper harvests coming in every single week, sometimes several times a week, that I don't have room. Like, we, I don't even have enough family to give them away to. And the great thing about living here in Arizona, there's a lot of good things about living here. One of them is having a really long growing season. We can pretty much grow things all year round. It's just during the summer where a lot of people don't want to grow things because it is very hard to be out here when it's really hot outside and the UV index is crazy high. But what I love is being able to overwinter plants without doing anything. I don't need to transfer them to a container and then add protection or add protection to the beds. I just cut them back and once it starts warming up, they just bounce right back. And in my case, I tried overwintering mine by cutting them back but every single week it would keep pushing out more growth and more growth. And this was one of those pepper plants that the first year did not perform. I don't even remember getting any harvest from it the first year. Let me do a little bit of calculation here. I started gardening August of 2020. None of my pepper seeds came up because it was August and I was direct sowing them. But then the following year in I would say the spring, late spring is when I started some more peppers and then this was one of those plants. So this is less than two years old and now it's a very productive plant. It's very tall. I need to cut it back. The trunk is actually really thick. It's as thick as some of my trees right now. And I think that's just because it's a more mature plant and that's also why it's so productive and it can take the heat pretty well. The rest of this garden bed is full of squash. The reason I planted it here is because I thought it would get a lot more protection from the sun because other squash plants that got a lot more full sun fried. And here it's right next to the house so it gets a little bit of southern sun protection. But I've noticed in the last few days when I'm looking out the window that even these beds right here, because I don't have any shade cloth set up, are getting quite a bit of sun. And the squash plants still look pretty good. I mean, they do get kind of droopy during the day, but because they're set up on drip now, they're getting enough water. So as soon as the sun starts making its way around, they just perk right back up, which is normal to see. And they're quite productive. There's actually a huge squash over on the first one that I haven't harvested yet. And we also have some strawberries sprinkled throughout. Most of the bed is kind of bare though, so I need to go through and sow some more stuff. That way we can have it full of everything. But I feel like my plan so far is working where by this point in time, I would have already had my shade cloth up in the garden. This year, I am trying my best not to add any shade cloth. I'm just trying to be strategic about where I place plants. Like these squash plants that are still getting quite a bit of sun are not getting fried because they're in a nicer microclimate versus being somewhere else in the garden where they are just bombarded with sun all day long. It's working so far, but we'll still have to see. Back here though, I have my sunshine blueberry plant and it is looking the prettiest it has ever looked. It's got so much green growth. It's really nice and bushy and oh, it just looks gorgeous. This plant did produce, but it didn't produce as much as I would have liked it to. And I think a huge reason for that is that it needs to get nicely acclimated. Also, I caught my baby coming out here several times and just picking handfuls of blooms off the plant. I would just find flowers all along the floor, but that's how it goes. And when she's older, I think we're gonna laugh about this together. In the meantime, I'll just cry by myself. But next to it, I have a pineapple plant. This is the only pineapple plant I have right now. And I feel like I need a lot more because we eat pineapple all the time. But this was started from a pineapple top and it was actually really easy to propagate. I think I started it in water for about two to three weeks and then I transplanted it over and I don't do anything to it. It's not set up on drip or anything. Whenever it rains, it gets water then and then once in a rare blue moon, I come in here and I give it some fish fertilizer. But that's rare because 
it just looks happy as is. And then next to that, I have my heritage raspberry. So I had two varieties planted in this container, a heritage and an amity raspberry. The amity did not make it at all. And I thought that one would for sure. The heritage on the other hand really started taking off. It doesn't have fruit yet because it was planted a few months ago, but look at these leaves. I thought raspberries for sure would not grow here. And I don't want to get my hopes up because we haven't hit the hottest parts of the year yet. So we'll see then, but hopefully I'm able to keep it alive until the fall. That way we can start to get some production from it. It might not be a lot, but if I can even get it to produce just a handful of raspberries, I'm gonna feel like I'm on top of the world. I should also point out that I built this trellis for it because it was starting to sprawl all over the place and it has thorns and my kids are constantly walking around giving me garden tours too. That's something I never record, but sometimes they'll come out here and tell me, mommy, let me show you my garden. And they'll come around and say, this is a pepper plant and it's got peppers on it. And this is a tomato plant and it has tomatoes on it. And sometimes they'll look at this squash and they'll say, what is this plant called again? And I'll tell them, a squash? Okay, okay. This is a squash plant and it has squash on it. <laughs> it's the cutest thing ever. Anyways, I feel like the kids are gonna love it whenever this does start to produce raspberries or if it ever starts to produce raspberries because I think that'll be really cool. The long planter in the back is full of strawberries. It has a squash plant right here. It has my passion fruit and it has some herbs which at this point have already dried up like my dill. I had cilantro over here. There's still some parsley right there, but I need to go through and re-sow a few more things. Something you guys might notice is that the grapes look a lot more different than they did last month. And the reason for that is my watering. So the leaves started shriveling up and turning yellow. And my first thought would normally be over watering. They're getting way too much water. But then I went and felt the soil bone dry. And I know that's my fault because I always figured since this portion of the yard is up against the house, it won't need as much water as the rest of the garden beds. So whenever I would come out here and water, if I was in a rush and I didn't get to these two beds, I would think, well, they'll be fine until the next watering because they're getting a little bit more protection. But then I started seeing the grapes showing that they were in distress. And ever since I added the drip irrigation and they're being watered on a regular schedule, there's no more yellowing starting to spread, which it was rapidly spreading before. From one week to the next, it was just yellow leaves everywhere. Hopefully they recover quickly because they already look so much better after less than a week of having drip set up. So water really does make a huge difference in the garden. And it honestly made me really sad because I started seeing the leaves drooping for the first time, which I rarely ever see on grapes because they're pretty heat tolerant over here. But a plant will do that when it's getting full sun every single day, it's getting no water and the roots just aren't able to drink like they should. Back here, I have my passion fruit vine. This one you guys can see looks crazy happy. I actually went through and pruned it back not too long ago because it was starting to climb onto the grape trellis and also starting to sew its little tendrils into this portion of the window, the screen part. So I needed to keep it in check and the birds really seem to love this passion fruit vine because they've started making nests right there and then another one somewhere up there. Oh. What the heck's up there? So there's feathers up there right now. <laughs> this is probably why there's so many birds in the garden too. They're like, my babies are right there. But yeah, there's nests in the passion fruit vine. One thing I wanna do in the next few weeks is propagate some more passion fruit cuttings because I had two that I had transplanted, they didn't make it. I think it just was way too hot for them and they shriveled up. So I need to take a couple more and then try again because I really want a passion fruit vine where you guys saw the loofah. I think they would look really pretty there. And this one is going insane, but I feel like it quickly outgrew this trellis. Here's how I know that we still have little unwanted visitors in the garden. This tomato was all the way across on the other portion of the yard and something brought it all the way over here and started eating at it. So <laughs> the rest of the garden bed is just full of cardboard because of the new seeds that I planted. But we also have some squash plants right here, a pepper plant over here, some strawberries. I actually had a few more strawberry plants, but most of the bed gets full sun throughout the hottest parts of the day. So the strawberries quickly fizzled out, but the ones that are a bit more shaded, like over on this corner, are still hanging in strong. 
We also have a Tommy Toe tomato. We have a few melons that are gonna start to climb up. And then I went ahead and re sowed a bunch of beans in here, some more roselle hibiscus or sorrel, and some more okra. So my plan during the hottest parts of the month is just to plant things that are extremely heat tolerant. That way I don't have to worry about adding any additional protection to them. And that way I can also continue to get harvest all year round. I wanna show you the top of this garden bed before I show you everything else because it's just covered in sunflowers. And these came from seeds that I saved from last year and they just look so beautiful. And it's working where they're providing a sort of microclimate by shading the plants underneath them and we're working in layers. So we have these really tall heat tolerant plants and then shorter ones that are more heat tolerant and then the ones that are the least heat tolerant are shorter and all the way at the bottom. That way they are protected from the sun as much as possible without me having to add shade cloth. But just look how beautiful they are. And I've noticed that for the longest time I didn't realize there was bees in the garden because I would come out here and I wouldn't see anything. But now I see that they come out in the evenings once the sun starts going down and then also in the early morning. So whenever I've woken up really early, I come out here and I just see them buzzing around everywhere and that makes me very happy. And the birds also seem to enjoy the sunflowers a lot, which is not a bad thing because it keeps them off of most of my other plants. The rest of the garden bed is covered in more cardboard. It also has a couple of pepper plants, which I discovered after I removed the dinosertiums because they had just taken over everything. I didn't realize nasturtiums got that big. And now I actually see some of these little pepper plants popping through. I also have some more zucchini or squash over here. I'll know for sure once it starts producing, but right now it's kind of hard to tell for me at least. The good thing is that it looks really nice and happy. We also have some more beans climbing up the trellises and some more tomato plants. This is the last large garden bed, which is the fullest garden bed, I think, which I'm actually surprised by because this bed gets probably the most sun out of all the garden beds. Here we have things like this amaranth right here, which is gorgeous. This is my first year growing amaranth. I just wanted to add really beautiful pops of color. And I know that the grains are also edible and some of them are even used for dyeing things. I haven't done a lot of crafts lately, but I might start to, or whenever I make the macrame hangers for my melons, I can go ahead and dye them with some of the amaranth as well. Next to that, we have a ton more sunflowers providing shade for things like my peppers back there. I have a few okra plants that are just hanging in there. I feel like a lot of things that I transplanted a month or two ago should have been a lot further along, but due to my watering practices, that stunted them a lot. So I think the new things that I've reseeded are really going to take off now that they have everything they need. In the back, I have some more tomato plants and some more zucchini plants as well. But most of the garden bottom is also just full of cardboard. Over on this side, I've got my flame seedless grapevine, which is looking really beautiful. I feel like now I know that I do need to make several tiers. So come winter, I have two cordons splitting out this way. I'm gonna have another portion of the trunk go up have it split again and maybe go, go up one more time and have it split again. I'm not entirely sure though. I might do either two or three layers just because I see all the production of grapes down here. So I want another section of grapes up here and maybe another one up here. But these vines have been very vigorous and unlike the other grape vines, I have not seen any yellowing on these leaves. I did see hornworms for a while until the birds came and took care of them for me, which is awesome. And I also went through and bagged all of the grapes because they really started plumping up and some of them have a little blush of color starting to want to take place. And I know that once they start turning, the birds are just gonna go after them like crazy. So I wanted to make sure to cover them. The organza bags that I'm using are 12 by 16 inches. I also wanna show you this grapevine over here because it also looks beautiful. It's not as full, but this one is just taking a while to really take off. And I think next year is gonna be completely different. I think it's gonna be a lot more established. It gets a nice amount of water now. So it's probably gonna have a good amount of fruit as well. So I'm gonna do the same thing where I train it in cordons splitting off. That way we get a nice amount of fruit. And I'm super excited to show you these planters over here because it's been my dream to have cucamelons take over this entire trellis. And I thought it wouldn't happen because I've tried germinating cucamelon seeds for so long now. I've gone through packets of seeds and had nothing take off, but that was also before I started adding drip to my garden. And now that we have drip set up, we have all these cucamelon vines everywhere with blooms everywhere. They're kind of hard to spot just because they're so tiny but I'm pretty sure that this entire thing is gonna fill out. And this is all just one plant right here, which is nuts to me. I actually had several more, but most of them didn't make it. For the fall, I'm definitely going to plant some more because I really want my kids to be able to come out here and grab cucumbers whenever they want. I think it's just one of the cutest little cucumbers. The fact that they look like miniature watermelons is just 
makes my brain happy. And I also have some cabbages still there, just infested with aphids and stuff. So I need to get them out of the garden, but I keep forgetting. And then also some celery that's going to seed. I've cut it back several times and every single time it just keeps shooting back up. So I guess I'll just harvest seeds from it because I think this is a pink variety. Over on this side, I have this red Malaysian guava and look at the size of this trunk now, you guys. That's something that I wanna point out every single month because this tree was so weak when I first planted it, it just kept flopping right over. And look at it now, the trunk is really nice and sturdy and it's thickening up nicely because it actually is able to move around whenever there's windy days. It also has some fruit on it because just like my lemon guava, it just kept flowering even when I tried to take them off. So now we've got <laughs> some good sized fruit on it. I would say maybe about half a dozen on there. And then in this planter next to it, I have a tiny little eggplant and I believe this is a San Marzano tomato. I've harvested two from it. I think there might be a few more ready to pick, but I really like this variety. I think it's really good for any type of dish, especially sauces, and it's quite productive. It's a determinate type and it's in a small planter and it's doing great so far. Next, I have my fig tree. This is a Marseille Black VS and it is loaded with fruit. This is actually one of my favorite varieties. I'm pretty sure every fig tastes incredible, but I tend to lean towards those that taste like berries. I'm not a huge fan of the honey or sugary figs because I can't handle sweets that much, but the jammy berry type are my weakness. And this one produces figs that are a little bit smaller, but they're extremely sweet. They're extremely jammy and sticky and absolutely delicious. It's getting dark, so I'm gonna try to point out everything as quickly as possible. Here's another fig tree, also loaded with fruit. I don't know what variety it is though. Is there a ripe one? Nope, nope, okay. In this planter, I have some more Como eggplant, and there's actually some that should be ready to harvest soon. This plant is very productive. Towards the back, I have some Malabar spinach. I planted this one so that we could harvest the leaves and eat them as greens throughout the summer months because it's really heat tolerant. And it also seems to be very happy here because it's getting a little bit of sun protection by these tomatoes and all the sunflower leaves. In the corner, I have some Roselle hibiscus along with a bunch of epazote, which is going to start trying to seed itself soon. And then in the very back, I have some pepper plants, some more, ooh, some Armenian cucumbers. Wait, what? Ooh, and then a bunch of sunflowers along with a pepper plant and some bitter melon. My pomegranate tree is kind of hard to see just because of the sunflower right here, but it has some really nice fruit on it. I think it's got about five or six right now. I need to bag a few more of them just to make sure that the birds don't get to them. But this is a Parfianca variety and the fruit looks beautiful. I cannot wait to try it. I was not the biggest fan of pomegranates. My husband and kids love them. I never really liked them until I tried one at the store that was a lot smaller. The seeds were a lot softer and smaller as well. And it was extremely sweet instead of being very sour and just like acidic. And I love that. So this variety is supposed to be really sweet. One of the best varieties. And I can't wait to harvest from it. The planter next to it has some huge pepper plants along with some squash. And these pepper plants have also been overwintered. And you guys saw me build these trellises for these plants and they've really helped to stabilize these huge peppers because I'm able to tie them back that way they're not flopping all over the place because last year I would try and use stakes but because these are small planters with closed bottoms the stakes would fall over constantly and during really stormy or windy days some of the branches on my pepper plants would just break off and now that doesn't happen anymore because I constantly tie them back to let them grow really tall and they're filling out nicely I love the way this looks next to that I have another fig tree which is also starting to produce and all of my fig trees were propagated from cuttings and next to that I have another planter with a trellis it's got pepper plants that are loaded and these peppers are actually going to start turning red soon because I can start to feel them getting a little bit leathery so I need to go through and harvest. I've got some fairy tale eggplant so you can see all the fruit down here and then another pepper plant also loaded with fruit. In between that I have some sunflowers and I also want to add some vining crops here that way they can start wrapping their vines around the trellis and I think that'll look really pretty. I might even try and add some melons in here some small miniature melons that way they can start dangling over the top of the trellis. One thing I do is I pack my planters like crazy and for some reason it works. I don't know how I would assume that they would just run out of space but honestly they seem to be super happy. They're fed constantly, they're watered every single day and then everything just produces like crazy. I love it. It's getting dark once more. One of these days I'll be able to finish before 
the sun goes down. But here I have a tropic white guava, which has started producing. We have some fruit starting to grow. I would say maybe about five or six fruit, maybe a little bit less than that. But I really like the shape of this tree right now. It's growing very nicely. I see some more fruit starting to develop, so we'll probably get some more production throughout the year. And this will actually be its first year producing. This was the first guava tree that I added to the garden as well. I also want to point out this Florida Prince peach right here because it's grafted onto a dwarf rootstock. This used to be a contender peach tree, which doesn't do well where I live because it requires way too many chill hours. So this was the first tree I ever grafted and I didn't know whether it would be successful or not. And as you can see, it's starting to fill out super nicely. I am obsessed with the way it looks. I can't wait until we harvest fruit from it because not only will it be the first time that we harvest fruit from this specific tree, but also the first time that we harvest fruit from a grafted tree that I did myself. And that just feels like such a huge accomplishment. And then next to it, we have more three gallon containers of different peppers and tomatoes that are also fruiting. And I would touch them, but it's getting dark and I'm scared of spiders. In this pathway alone, I have seven fig trees started from cuttings in 15 gallon containers and they're extremely happy with beautiful fruit on almost every single tree. There's maybe one variety right now that I see that hasn't produced anything. And that's one of the varieties that I plan to graft onto. The sun is almost fully gone. So I wanted to show you guys my roses on either side. These are the Don Juan roses. Right now they look like a really dark purple just because the blooms are kind of dry. <laughs> but I haven't deadheaded them just because I want the main canes to continue stretching out. I was like, what's that sound? It's the trees that are being watered right now. But I want the main canes to continue growing so that they can climb the entirety of the trellis because then I think it'll look really beautiful when we have blooms everywhere. They are going into their second year now and I feel like that's when we'll start to see a lot more progress taking place because the roses will be a lot more established and now they have a steady supply of water which is something very important especially during the hottest parts of the year. But that's basically my entire garden tour. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next one. Bye guys.